Okay. I'd like to officially call to order the August 29th meeting of the Bolton Conservation Commission. And as always, we will start with a roll call. I am Brian Farabee. I am Jeff Bryan. Jeff Lawrence. All right, the Bolton Conservation Commission will now hold a public hearing on the provisions of Mass General Law Chapter 131, Section 40, the Wetlands Protection Act and Riverfront Act, and under the Bolton Wetlands Bylaw Chapter 233 to consider a request for determination filed by Megan Duhane for a proposed shed placement located at 670 Main Street. Public meetings to be held now uh, here in the Houghton Um do not have the applicant here tonight. Um, that said, Rebecca, do you want to give us a rundown on what the project entails? Sure. So the project entails, I had sent you all basically just a breakdown report on August 8th, so a few weeks ago now. Um, there is a shed in the buffer area. I don't know if you want to pass that down or not. Um, and they had started building it. We had received a complaint, so I had written a letter asking them to file immediately. They had come in within a day and filed a request for termination. And they seem open to, and they stopped building the shed, but it is still standing where it was started. Um, the area is down, it's, a flat area and a very large slope, I guess I would say. Um, and the area directly behind the home is potentially a septic. They weren't sure exactly where that was. So they can either go to the left or if the commission wants, because they seem to be open to other ideas or suggestions on what would be more positively seen. Um, and so when we were out on the site, we saw there was an area near a large tree that's very close to a property line, um, or an even better area that the commission members that were out on site had thought was the area um, outside of where that septic may be. Um, there's a cordwood pile um, with some grapevines over it next to a play structure. So it seemed that where the cordwood is, because you can move that around fairly easily, um, that may be the best place to put it. At least that was sort of the ideas being thrown about at the site visit. Um, ever, I don't, Lori, I don't know if you had a chance to go out there. Uh, I drive by it every day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Jeff, oh. Jeff Lawrence and I were out there. Um, it seemed to me, looking at where the shed was placed, mm -hmm. um, that really, I mean, it really abutted the wet zone. I mean, mm -hmm. it was right up against it, which to a certain extent, if people build on existing lawn, there's a little bit of leeway there, but it was hard to see that this was lawn so much as this is kind of where the lawn dropped off and this was more a little bit of growth, mm -hmm. kind of like bordering to yeah. wetland. Uh, a little bit of growth on the side of the wetland area. It's really not an ideal area to have the shed placed, um, which unfortunately they started building it in yeah. um, to catch it earlier, but it seemed to me like it would be better if they could move it to a different part of the lawn, as Rebecca was saying, or one or two other areas. I don't know if they're ideal, ideal for them, but it pulls it from bordering the wetland like right on it to at least up onto what is currently lawn, currently grass. Um, that's kind of where I was leaning with this one. Yeah. Um, don't know those other thoughts. Um, I, I agree. I, I agree. It's, in the, <coughs> it, it's within the 25 and it's really set down gradient. Um, and not, it's not in standing water now, but could, could be. Yeah. And considering the fact that it's a utility shed, it'll most likely have um, Oil and gas petroleum based yeah. products, right? Either in yeah, storage solids, or in equipment. Yeah, um, yeah. And, and it looks room. like there's alternate area to put that shed. Yeah. yeah. Um, did you have further thoughts? Nope. I think 
Uh, at the last meeting, Lori brought up a good point about what was stored in or potentially stored mm -hmm. in it, um, because most likely you're not going to drain it every time you put it away, and then on top of that, mm -hmm. what's going on in in terms of fuel. Um, and I also think it's extremely close, if not in the wetland area, without doing any tests on site. Um, or having a wetland delineation, but I think the Cordwood area, if they're okay with moving, I don't know how hard it is to move grapevines, to be honest. Um, if they're okay with that or have them grow up around the shed, I think that's a much better area. Um, it's upgrading from the wetland, it's on a flatter area, so you have a little bit of buffer before it drops off again. So, <coughs> yeah, it's basically existing grass. Um, the only audience yes. member have any comments. Martha Remy's on Main Street. I want full disclosure because I am a friend of Pat Ben Settler. I knew Stan Pearson who owned the house previously. There should be a record of where the septic is placed on that property. And even though from Main Street it looks like that's very innocuous and kind of cute down there next to the wetlands area, uh, I think that if there's any problem, you should ask where the septic is really located. And couldn't it, is it, is it a pole barn or does it have cement uh, stakes into the ground? It, it wasn't even stakes, it was like a... Is it going to be a, just a sod-based building? Uh, no, there'd be some sort of cement foundation. At least that's how it is now, there's cement yeah, blocks. Be, because I have a pole barn that has sod on it and then I put cement, uh, those cement blocks that you yeah. can get different things yeah. and your dad said that's a better chicken house than just having a <laughs> you know a dirt thing but that's not here or there I, and I know that he mentioned the existing barn and how it had a floor that was actually underground level there but um, okay. you know the barn that's there now there's a little it's, it used to be a garage the garage oh yeah. yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. yes. Yeah. Yeah. I call it a barn but he said that was down I don't know where the alternate area would be but to me it's just a bystander. It's clearly in the wetlands yep. boundary. And even though I don't know if I were the abutter, if it would be that offensive to me, because so far, even though it's um, incomplete, it looks cute. <laughs> but, you know, there probably will be uh, hazardous materials put in there. And I know lawnmowers and things can drip them. So I just wanted to yeah. comment that. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. So, seems like in talking that most of us think it, it should definitely not go there. Mm -hmm. um, what would the finding be for the RDA? Would there be a finding? What would be, as it's, as it's worded right now, it would be, from what it sounds like, because okay. you haven't voted yet, so right. I'll say it that right, way. Right, right. It, it would be a positive finding, um, because they asked for the placement of it here. Right. right. So that we can condition it, but we need the change of placement. Right, you need if yeah, we would need the change of placement if you were gonna condition it. So you can do that. You can say No, because then it would be oh, This is a request there. for determination of applicability. Correct. correct? Yes. And the, Which normally would come before any construction. Normally, correct. Yes. Thank you. But he didn't ask for what, did he? No. Yeah. Not ahead of time. But once it was pointed out to him, it was stopped. <laughs> yes. He stopped at that point. We should, there's a number of different findings we can have. I just want to see which one's most appropriate in this. So, for just for the audience's knowledge, a positive finding basically means no, and a negative finding means yes. It's a little backwards.
I suppose you put one of those little temporary plastic things up there and just stuff is that. If it's in that same spot, you yeah. can just have to move it to. Yeah. yeah. So even a temporary plastic shed. Structure, yeah. And then you get a Home Depot, if you brought it in, plunked it down, and you yeah. still have to move it. Yeah. So. Yeah. Regardless. Regardless. You know. You got me. That's a it's, it's beautiful. As I was going to say, I think he's done a wonderful job building yeah. it. Um, it's really it's, cute, I mean, you can but see it's like in the, the way. It's a cat of nine tails that like, are touching the back yeah. of the shed as they come up yeah. out of it. I agree. I, when I saw it driving by, I thought for sure it was yeah. in the pond. Or what it, was it, all, it almost seems, that, yeah, if we get some heavy rains, it could yeah. all be. Was that a pond at one time? It's no, it's small, always right? gotten bigger and bigger and bigger until the beaver were finally, you know, sort of exterminated so in the late 1990s. And so it was yeah, always just like a wet swamp. Yeah, I mean, it was, I mean, it was like a fresh meadow. It, to file it could be file. used for grazing, but it's gotten more and more uh, wetland. So what is there a stream in the right? But they call that the fresh meadow that's, you know, back of Florence Sawyer Field yeah. and they can still in that area so and uh, build it at that point. Yeah. They only right. caught two okay. beaver okay. there. It was amazing. With the one? That was quite they were big. Yes. Yeah. One was huge. Um, and What'd there was quite a controversy about that. Where is it? <laughs> Where is it? Where is it? Yes. Let's go. And you know, that the whole area, there's conservation trees. land there because there's a trail back there that runs from 626, where the Bolton Bean is, back over to the 676 Historical Society. Oh, there is? Yeah, and, and that's supposed to have public access. And that those beaver dam were huge. That And there's a, the brook runs through there, through the private so property. Mental document. And it's yeah. supposed to be accessible to go back there and actually back to the Mechanic Street extension. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And it's, got, yeah. it's gotten worse and worse because yeah. Yeah, please. the, I don't know, because of the beaver so, and... You know the, brook is. the brook is the one that goes by the... It's by Great the Brook, the one that comes from yeah. here, crosses oh, under the road, yeah. on yeah. Park, goes and back goes to Quinlan's. by the septic thing back there, right? Back to the school, behind the school? Oh, the water treatment plant. Yeah. By it's, the school. it's actually south of that. There's a crossing from Mechanic Street Extension to the water treat wastewater treatment plant, and then the berm for the old railroad. It's yep. it's south of that, yep. and then it crosses under in back of yep. 560, 556, and 550 before it goes underneath 495 right. into the North Fork of Great Brook. Walk to organize. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, I'm going to make a motion that we close the public hearing for the request for determination of 670 Main Street. Here a second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Uh, so closed. Uh, I'd like to make a motion that we have a positive one determination uh, for the request for determination for 670 Main Street shed placement. What does that entail? So, let me read it for you. The area described on the reference plans is in an area subject to protection under the Act. Removing, filling, dredging, or altering of the area requires a filing of a notice of intent. So, at that point, this is saying no to this filing, but they can file a new RDA with it proposing a new spot, mm -hmm. or they can file an NY for this. I don't see that happening, but. In case. It gives them the most options. Some of the other ones require supplemental paperwork. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. As I said, pass them down too if you want to read through them. So, what happens if he doesn't move it? Just leave it like that. He has to, otherwise, he gets fined every day. Fine. Yeah. Um, I'm sure he'll call out. He's like a nice guy. Yeah. He wants to look at the positive generations. Um, I don't know if you want to read through them. We do have an open motion. That means nobody's seconded it yet. No, um, second it these are the positives. So those are the five options, basically. If you want to look through them, we have some time. We have Brandon at 730. <coughs>
Here a second. Second. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Positive one it is. Or negative determination on the RDA. Positive. Positive. It's reversed. A positive it's is a reverse. negative. I, so a positive it. means it's not allowed in the place. Oh, oh okay. Sorry, I intruded. I heard you. It's okay. It's, 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 it's a little confusing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, hopefully they just move it up. And those septic uh, plants, as I say, are available. Yeah, I'll have to look in the Shelburne that. Regional Valley. Yeah, the Shelburne Regional uh, Health Boards of Health has them. Yeah, and do Charlotte Villas may even have them. Yeah, I'll have to ask. I mean, they gave well, us well, something. Well, you, you won't have to. It's basically denied based on its placement now. Right. And if they want to come back with yeah, another RDA at that point in time, that, we'd have you know, to look it up or they'd need to explain. Right, yeah. right. But you don't have to worry about that. No, yeah. but I'm saying if they come back. Correct. Uh, all right, we have a few minutes before 7.30. Everybody have a chance to go through the minutes from last time. If not, would you like to look through them quickly, Gal? They were in the package. <coughs> oh, it's still a second. Yeah. Which is hard, <laughs> yes. Through. Yeah. Any questions? Problems, All right. I guess I'd like to make a motion to approve the minutes for our August 15th, 2017 meeting as currently submitted. Second. All those in favor? Aye. So approved. the difference what is an abbreviated notice of resource area of delineation abbreviated notice is the part that I was wondering about is that um, an expediting or something I don't believe so I don't know Brandon might be able to answer better it's a shorter it's form just basically they used to have what they call an abbreviated notice of intent also like if you have less work than will be required for a full notice of intent. Based on so that. all it is is it's a mechanism to allow you to certify a wetland boundary without having a project. So prior to, prior to doing your project, you can just come in, do a formal filing, certify the wetland boundary so that 
basically define the levels before you start an engineering project. I don't know if you can go forward or not, yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Isn't this an 18 unit phosphor? Uh, we haven't opened that hearing yet. We will open okay. it to the public in a few minutes. Oh, okay. Sorry, um, yeah. We one other to... question. Go I ahead. noticed across the street, I'm not sure if this was Bonazoli land or not. Uh, the beaver dam must have been breached because the water level is finally going down. If there's a road in between lands or lot lines, does that count in the buffer zones for the wetland areas? In other words, if across the street from that house was less than 25 feet across the road, yep. would that count? I don't know who owns that lot. I mean, it's pretty wet, and it's it, it came up during Century street, Mill. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it came up during Century Mill. It's where Danforth Brook is. Right. And the beaver have a lodge there now, and uh, as I say, just the last two, three weeks, it's gone down. So the, the beaver dam must have been breached. And I was just curious if that was within the where they're intending to have a retention or tension pond between Danforth and the driveway of the existing property? Uh, the road are you talking about 258? Yeah, road? right. This is 258. Um, we're, we yeah, need we'll to wait to get to okay. yeah, yeah, really sorry. Right, sorry, I just... Sorry. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. <clears throat> uh, All right. Well, we might. We, no, we get four more minutes. Um, did you want to talk site visits quickly? Oh, yeah. Um, okay, so... Yeah, right. Well, I guess we can wait for 258, but uh, Brian and I were out on 104 Spectacle Hill with Brandon um, along with on to 258 Hudson Road for the Ann Red as well. 104 is an extremely level lot to what I would say with the drainage area, um, which is what the wetland resource area is. They are proposing, which we'll learn about shortly, um, the area they're proposing to alter is basically affecting only a few trees in a tree line, potentially, um, away from the resource area, and then altering an area that's, again, flat, clearly lawn area um, between a shed and the driveway. So it's basically buffered by the shed and then lawn. And then 258 is, um, one of the areas we'll be talking about, but we basically just walked around along all the edges of the resource areas. Um, and they did a few samples when Brian and I were there as well to just show the upland versus wetland areas. <coughs> Two minutes. Anything else we need to talk quickly? Uh, not quickly. No. If you want to come up, we have a few minutes. Yeah, if you got to call me, Sean's here. <coughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, that's all right. I thought it was 7.30. I uh, apologize for that. That's all right. We, we have opened it. We discussed it. Um, we basically came up with a finding that said the shed can't go where it is right now, that it does. It's basically abutting the wetland. It's, it's within that buffer zone. It's kind of in an area that's subject to flooding that's not really existing lawn. It's kind of more of a buffer area. Um, we came up with a positive one finding, which basically says, it basically says, we're, you know, we don't approve this request for determination, but leaves it open if you want to submit a different one for a different place, or if you want to go an NOI route, or if I think you can, um, can you contest, you're right, you can contest RDA yeah. appeal. Uh, I believe so. I think so, any, any hearing. Yeah. So basically it, it kind of left you with those options. Um, but it's not approved for where it's currently placed. Okay. Does so what, what we did talk about while we were on the site visit, though, was an area, <coughs> because it seemed that at least your wife was open to moving it potentially, the area that was um, where your wood, cord wood is stacked, or where the play area is, yeah, potentially that's a better area. Well, so there's an existing structure there. Right. 
And that is in the 20 foot buffer zone as well. Uh, it's actually up gradient from it. Um, so that hill slope actually still counts. So the, the distance if that were flattened. If that makes sense. I know I didn't say that correctly. Exactly, yeah. Um, <clears throat> I mean, if that's your, that's your decision, that's your decision. It doesn't leave me with much options. Um, I mean, I know we talked about it last time. It's 0.70 per lot. Most of it is taken up by a home in the, in right. the, uh, <clears throat> in the septic system, which is a heavy grade around the property. You know, um, again, it was put there because it was the, really the only viable option. I mean, if I want to tear down a bunch of stuff, sure, I could put it where I tear things down. But. There, I mean, there is an appeals process, and I believe it's online under DEP, um, or you can file an NMI <coughs> technically with the findings, but it's still within the 25 foot. So even though state regulations would allow it the local bylaw breaches that um, yeah i mean my objective would be to find just i, I just yeah i just don't see how it's possible yeah. to have a shed on my property if, if it's a no it's just not which is i don't think is an insane request yeah. particularly for someone in town on a on an old lot who doesn't have any any real option for simple inert shed that it doesn't have power, yeah. it doesn't have electricity, is a box of wood, you know, it doesn't it doesn't pose much, but yeah, I, it, you know, it, it's really trying to keep everything as far as the wetlands as we can, the wetlands as we can. I mean, that, that we try to go keep out of the twenty-five foot buffer. I mean, that even kind of touches on it where the shed right now kind of touches the actual wet well, not even like in the buffer zone i mean it's up against the wetland um it's really hard for us to condition something like that um with the older lots it is very difficult we usually look at existing lawn parts of green grass where other structures might be yeah. as possible as even though they might be within the buffer zone it's easier for us to condition something like that because it yeah. is existing lawn than where it was now which was naturalized pretty well, it looked like, as far as buffer plants coming along on the edge Did of the wetland. Did you see the photos that I sent your way? Yes, I did. Yeah. Okay. okay. So that was the one that showed basically the cement blocks, uh, the foundation, and then before they put them in, it was like a dirt area. Right. And then the lilies around the edge of it. Yeah. I do remember. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. naturalized now because I haven't, I haven't touched the area because of, you know, I was asked not to. Mm -hmm. so. Which we're happy you didn't. Yeah. That was a very yeah. good yeah. thing. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I said you're, you're open to file again. Um, uh, it's, just, yeah. it's, it's been a long process. It's a yeah. simple yeah. shed. Mm -hmm. The only way around it for me is to find a way out of the buffer zone in an area where I can put it. There's just no, no real option. And, and, and I was going to say boundary offsets too. Right, right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So on top of my septic, it's work. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks for your time. No, thanks for Thank coming you. in. Thank you. The Bolton Conservation Commission will now continue a public hearing the versions of the Mass General Law Chapter 131, Section 40, and the Bolton Button Bylaw Chapter 233 to consider a notice of intent filed by Brandon Ducharm for the proposed subdivision located at 649 Main Street, a uh, public meeting held this evening. All right, Brandon Ducharm, Ducharm Dillis, on behalf of Paul Bum Landers. Um, we've had a few meetings. We've, I guess at the last meeting, we kind of were moving towards discussing um, potential conditions and the order conditions and I know you guys have been working on drafting the order conditions. Um, wh one of the things that was mentioned which was kind of a, an added detail to a note, um, I did specify the size of the blueberry bushes um, and I just I kept the data of the plan the same just to the event that you were drafting an order just so it refers to the correct plan uh, but, but beyond that and I don't know if there's any other conditions we wanted to discuss or 
There was one, but I believe you had said it would be addressed and the way it's typically addressed is in the construction. Well, I'll start with the question or the concern. Um, the culvert as it exists now, heavy machinery and things like that, it's not constructed in a way that can uphold constant travel with heavy machinery. Um, so that being said, I know you had discussed that that would be a priority or that would be assumed to be a priority in terms of construction sequencing. And part of the order of conditions is that we have to receive the construction sequence. So that comes first and then they put out the erosion controls and we check that. Um, and I would strongly encourage the second on the list when it comes in, the, the culvert needs to be done. I'm not sure how plausible that is because I'm not a contractor, so I don't know how right. it works, yeah. but that needs to be a priority because of we don't want it to fail and then if we have any heavy rain. Yeah. No, and as we discussed last night, I think it's a valid concern and, and certainly depending on how the contractor is going to approach it, you know, we can address that construction and sequencing. Um, and even if there's any options that, that they can present to kind of make that more feasible, even if they were to steel plate it or, you, you know, I don't yeah. really know what they might come up with. But, you know, if it's easy enough, it just makes the most sense to kind of do a culvert first, you know. The only other question, and then I apologize, this is coming late. Was there any bonding on this site at all? For the crossing the plants? No. No. We hopefully we seem to be getting away from that. Um, okay. Just in the event, my, my point has always been, you know, even with the bond, where this isn't a town road that's mm -hmm. going to be accepted. And that's typically something that we're planning for on, right. on a town roadway. You okay. know, that the town is ultimately going to have to accept it right away. So, mm -hmm. you know, they certainly could hire someone to go in there and, and finish it. Um, but to me, that's kind of a challenge on private property. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, that's a tough one because we did when we got away from the bonding. Mm -hmm. um, the, the discussion was on private property, not so much private property, but private mm -hmm. landowners as opposed to commercial ventures. Okay. That we were going to keep it in place for commercial ventures. Okay. Um, and we'd have to go back and possibly review. I think mm -hmm. the bonding is still in place. I mean, I mean yes, uh, the process uh, is still in place. Yes. I mean, ultimately, we need to obtain a certificate of compliance. That would hope that right, that would be. If it's not done in accordance with your conditions, then you know we're not going to obtain that. Right. right. Uh, true. And then we can't sign off. Unless the project fails. Right. Which is part of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if any work continues, I mean, let's just say nobody does anything and the right. order expires, any work that's done beyond that point is subject to enforcement. You know, at that point, you're not working without valid order conditions. So, seems to work everywhere else. Yeah, yeah. I'm just it's a, yeah no, it's a, it's a good <laughs> question. <laughs> it it's the first time we really had to discuss it. Martha, you Martha Remington, Main Street. Um, I have a couple questions. Um, didn't we discuss that this will be an approved road in Bolton? Uh, no, it's private common driveway. Okay, but they had mentioned calling it Powers Way or something, right? Yeah, so the landowner, um, just you know, given the connection to the property. Even family, though it's really like a it's common kind of, driveway. Right, yeah, they kind of wanted to name it. Okay. Yeah, if the planning board was open to that, just you know, because of John Powers, the history there. And I also wanted to mention what you just mentioned about the expiration of the permit. Let's remember that Craftsman Village at Brigham Farm was extended from that two-year permit, I think, up to almost 15 years. Remember, some, Mr. Sweeney? Yeah, but some of that happened because of the, the market crash. And right. The state it's put economic in stimulus package. Right. Which was right, but I mean, you know, years, right? expiration in two or three years of a permit to build. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't a really a firm thing. It doesn't mean it has to be re reviewed. Oh. Things can be changed, and that was re uh, renewed. It is, actually. I, I think it, there was a Permit Extension Act that extended those permits to seven years. 
any extensions beyond that, they had I to actually... They were two years at a time, they had actually. To, right, but they have to actually apply for the extension. Mm -hmm. Right, but um, it's only an extension from the existing decision. It's not a re-review of the entire project. Anyway, I just want to say... Correct, but then we can close it's the... It's not we can, hard in Bolton to extend an expired permit. Right, yeah. but we could always just deny the extension and they have to refile. If we want them to make significant changes, we just deny the extension and have them refile. I mean, it's like, I just know that it's come in front of us before people trying to extend, and right. we've had the ability to and open it, it up. It and may discuss. be a different thing for extending conservation decisions than uh, planning board decisions. I mean, that was a 40B. I do not know. Right? That he I'm did. not sure what the difference is. Yeah, I, I'm not sure on that. But I know That's with, okay. with ours, it, you know, you, you can't just kick it down the road indefinitely. It does actually come <coughs> for us if people are applying for extension. What's that? What do you think that finished this? Um, I mean, it's only four homes, so I can't. Yeah, no, I, I'm just curious homes. about. It. Yeah. Um, so started shoveling tomorrow. I would imagine it's going to be a you know, fairly quick turnaround because once you invest in that driveway, the only way you're going to really recoup the cost is to sell the home. So, you know, yeah. they're, 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 they're so going to be nervous about the wash up. I would think. Um, year. I mean, it's, it's hard for me to put that on there, but I mean, it, it could be a year, or it could be two years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Hmm. And really, I mean, to be honest, with, with the order conditions we're talking about, it's really a kind of permit, this section here. I mean, even if they had two houses in and the driveway was all in and they got a seeded, planted, and everything's done, we could come in and ask for a sign-off at that point, you know, because there's really no more work that's going to happen. Right. Um, and obviously, with the wetland replication area, we're going to be monitoring that for a few years anyway. So it's going to, it's going to be an ongoing process, you know. Anybody else have questions on the order as it was drafted? How do you feel about the construction sequence? Are you comfortable with it? Would you like to add something in about that? I mean, I'm comfortable with it. If the commission wants to add anything, that's fine. Currently, I can read to you. So, on the special order conditions number or section three, construction <laughs> sequence and plan. The applicant or his representative shall provide a construction plan to the commission at least two weeks prior to commencement of construction. The construction plan shall include the following sequence of events and proposed schedule, including but not limited to placement of sedimentation and erosion control measures, site preparation, marking of trees to be removed, um, and then just the regular boilerplate. Um, but so we can, if the commission wants, add as that second bullet point um, something about the culvert. I don't know what that wording um, I would obviously need some help with that. Um, I don't know if it's culvert enforcement or roadway enforcement or just um, I think you just said language. I think what you're saying is, is the commission isn't comfortable with the contractor using the existing culvert. So part of the construction right. sequence needs to include how they're going to deal with that. Deal with that. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You know, so they kind of know when they're preparing that that that's what the issue is that they need to overcome with right. the folks. So that was like a homemade culvert anyway. Because yeah. we can look at it. Vote to prove it contingent yeah. upon. Yeah. But it's just getting that wording down. Go ahead, Mark. Excuse me, yeah. uh, Mr. Chairman. Just one more question. Is that culvert going to be more natural stone or is it going to be all concrete? It mm -hmm. has to be a natural bottom. Yeah, and we propose to use the natural stone as an existing stone. It's an old farm culvert, so kind of use those existing stones that are there now. So, oh, okay, great. Yeah. Thank you. You can do with all the stone walls that are out there. You know, try to save all those. Yeah. A lot of stone walls up there. A lot. Yeah. Jeez. Yes, and excuse me, Mr. Yeah, Chairman. Please. The historical commission had mentioned that stone walls that are there, even if they're if they're not boundaries with abutting properties, it's nice to keep those stones within that area. As, as a lover of stone walls, I agree. Yeah. <laughs> um, Changing the pawn is the best way to write that. Um, Construction sequence. Placement. It can literally just be a bullet point in this. Yep. 
um, but I just don't know how you want to state it. So adding, uh, adding condition. Brian, what do you think the first to start piece of work this? here in terms of flawless tree removal? Tree removal, yeah. What's that so about? I mean, obviously you're getting your erosion control on, and then it's going to be tree removal. Mm -hmm. So Oops. you know, I would think that you know, say. You're not going to have the culvert to do that. So if they could steel plate that, and you'd have to look at what kind of equipment they're going to use. I mean, obviously, we, we went over this with, with a pretty big excavator to do the testing. You know what I mean? And it, it held up, but still, if they just steel plated it to get that equipment out, and then they could actually stockpile a lot of the trees on this side until until that got done. You know, and then they can kind of haul everything out after that. How many trees have they got? Uh, a fair amount. Yeah, it's a good size area. Yeah. Some of them look pretty dangerous anyway. Yeah. You know, but yeah. there's some, some trees down in the vernal in the pond. You're not going to do anything with the pond or anything. Like that. I mean, the vernal. This, what the heck was it? Because we know. Yeah, that's yeah. not you at all. No. Where's the other one? The other one is no. right there. Yeah. That's not you at all. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, you've said steel plate a couple of times. Is that what you feel is the most responsible way? That'll that'll do it. I mean, yeah, you'd be able to carry the load over the stones. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to look for good wording to put that in. Um, it's basically any a condition of the construction sequence noting that existing culvert should be. That's a safeguard, but it's uh, yeah. Fortified is a good word. Fortified, right? yeah. Or reinforced. Yep. You could even. It sounds like steel plate, but it might be the solution. At least from a temporary standpoint. Yeah. It should be fortified or reinforced. It's possibly by steel plate. Uh, to ensure its integrity until it's removed, until it's, to ensure its integrity until its replacement. Sure. Right? Yeah, Does that, that make sense? Yeah. Sense. Sure. And the other thing that you kind of, you know, by doing it at the time of construction, I mean, it could be a time in August now that it's completely dry. Yeah, you know, mm -hmm. so maybe less of concern where it's really wet than definitely yeah. want to make sure, you know. When it's running, where does it end up? <laughs> I know. Uh, it kind of comes, comes through this Yeah, way. I know, but what is it? Once it goes, I noticed that there was a larger wetland, wetland yeah. down there, so it just dumps into a, yeah. a field. That's uh, all wooded, yeah. Yeah, well, well I mean, uh, Very not I mean field, I mean plains or just this doesn't go to another brook. Um just goes into the ground. Eventually, I mean it's probably I think goes to Danforth eventually. Yeah. Because yeah. it was dry when I went in there, it was all wasn't wasn't running. Mm. No. And this one was dry and that one was drying up too. That oh, I'm so surprised. That that pond, I'd be surprised to see when that gets there. That looked like a pretty good pond. Yeah. <laughs> what the hell is? Brandon, I know we talked about this. Uh, is, is, um, is that overflow being relocated? Right, was it? It, it is. On that was the last plant, it is. Thanks. Yeah, so that was kind of what we went over last time. So we've, we've modified that to be over there so it provides hydrology for that. Yeah. Great, thanks. Mr. Right. Chairman, just a question about the vernal pools. Are they considered wetlands and have a 25 foot at least buffer? As far as tree cutting, you know, the thing is climate change is real. Who cares who caused it? Every tree that is cut is not putting oxygen, you know, eating up carbon and putting oxygen into the environment. And I don't know, these are smaller lots. Most people want the lawn, but you know, it's time I think we thought that maybe we should try to save trees and have less lawn. Say the, we have to be careful too. There's only certain areas on this project that are actually jurisdictional to us. Um, in those areas, we really, I think we've And those are not the actual lots? Those are not the actual no, lots. Most really. of the lots so are- So they could clear cut to that. Uh, uh, so I mean, there's no, other there's, boards that it would go. Yeah, yeah, yeah so actually, no, I mean, it's just the idea that 
that same Developers issue came up realize. yeah with the planning board. So I think we and that's what why we did revise the plans on their no data okay. right there Cause to, to try to minimize because he kind of keyed in on some of these areas where if we could reduce the grading to basically provide more buffer, which we have agreed to. Yeah. Do, so so we've kind of gone through to aggressively save as many trees as we can, and, and again mm -hmm. we're talking about areas outside the buffer zone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's great. It helps not only their environment but the whole town as far as gobbling up that. Carbon. And as part of this plan, there's a replication area too where we're trying to replicate some wetland areas that may be taken as part of the culvert process. So we're actually trying to reclaim as well. Oh, and so the buffer for the burrow pools is white. Areas as well. 25 foot? It is 25 foot around the actual pools. Yep. The, the, uh, oh, God. So it could be cleared out to the pools. Right. So those are considered right. Whether there's certified or not, that's up to the Yeah, Correct. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Anybody have further questions on this? Um, all right. In that case, I'd like to make a motion that we approve the order of conditions contingent upon adding a condition to the construction sequence noting the existing culvert should be fortified or reinforced, possibly by steel plate, to ensure its integrity until replacement. Uh, do I hear a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So approved. I, I can okay. do that. Actually, I can, can read my like, somewhat shorthand, somewhat misspelled. It's pretty open. Okay. Yeah. That is a gas line. That's the gas line. That's right there. Right 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 we do an agricultural exemption on the whole, just the front. Uh, they're going to do the farm restriction on the whole thing. The farm yeah. restriction. Yeah. Plenty more tell these are just to do the whole thing. Makes sense. Yep. What does that mean? That means you can. It's just a way. That it's, it's a way that the restriction is held. Oh. You know, um, and it's it's by old and zoning by law, oh. where it can be public land. It can be a homeowner association that's going to hold the restriction or what they call farm restriction, which is what they're leaning towards in this because part of that restricted area, he's actively farming. You know, like, and Bolton wants to kind of encourage that. Yep. You know. Okay. Good. Basically upstream. That's true. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of rocks. Yeah. <laughs> the fact that Brian came up with uh -huh. he came up with a responsible plan. Yeah, very good. Oh. Sign. Sign. Please. Yeah. Sign. Conservation Commission will now hold a public meeting under the provisions of Mass General Law, Chapter 131, Section 40, the Wetland Protection Act and Riverfront Act, and under the Bolton Wetland Bylaw, Chapter 233, to consider a request for determination filed by Brandon Duchamp for, the, for a proposed septic upgrade and house addition located at 104 Spectacle Hill Road. The public meeting can be held this evening. All right, Brandon Duchamp, Duchamp and Dillis, on behalf of Ken Elworthy. 104 Spectacle Hill Road. Um, we, we filed a request for determination of applicability based on the fact that, um, well, a few reasons. Is number one on the exemption for replacement of an existing septic system. Um, 
this is an existing house. Um, the wet, there's a bordering vegetated wetland that kind of runs through the back here. We had a chance to take a look at this in the field. There's a, there's a small drainage ditch that kind of comes through and eventually ties down <coughs> to a larger wetland system of the property. Um, the 100 foot buffer zone is represented here by the orange line. Um, there's an existing cesspool that's in failure here. So the primary reason for the project is to obviously replace this with a fully functioning, um, mostly compliant um, septic system. When I say mostly, it's basically it's when you deal with an existing lot like this, it's maximum feasible compliance. So in terms of treatment, um, we meet all the offset requirements, you know, so uh, the separation between the groundwater and the bottom leaching field, all, all in compliance with Title V, State Environmental Code. Uh, some of the challenges we had here, which is why the septic system is in the, in the buffer zone, is we have an existing on-site private well here, and obviously Title V is, you know, you want to get 100 feet from that. Um, and we're also battling the wetlands here, and Bolton's um, Board of Health regulation, which requires a 100-foot setback, um, Title V is 50 feet, which we, we are in compliance with. So we're trying to site the system, um, obviously far enough from the well for the protection from a health standpoint, and also you know as far away from the wetlands as we can. And basically, we went out and did some soil testing. Um, there were some areas of ledge in the property, and essentially, th this is this is the one spot where we can get the system um, with the least amount of waivers. Uh, the second part of the the filing here is they're proposing an addition to the existing home, and again, we felt as though this can be handled with a RDA based on the fact that um, it's all within the existing yard. Uh, there is already several structures between this proposed structure and the wetland. And, and really, when they add on, we're not proposing any site grading. Um, essentially, it's just going to put up the existing addition, and, it, and um, you know, it's relatively flat between there and the wetland resource area. I would say, you know, it's all within the existing lawn, except for the small portion. That there's some screen trees over here, and again. Working with the homeowner who doesn't want to lose the screen trees either. You know, we're hoping to minimize and hopefully just kind of prune back those trees. You know, we may look at losing one potentially, but the goal is to, to preserve all those trees that we can. So we did have a chance, some of us, to take a look at it. I don't know if anyone has any questions. The addition is it a uh, full basement or is it? Full basement, yeah. So I guess quickly just to kind of walk the septic is um, the existing plumbing kind of comes out here. We'll tie in the addition as well as the existing plumbing to a septic tank. And just given the fact that in order to get that groundwater offset, you know, we do have a bounded system or raised septic system over here. So we're going to have a pump chamber which will dose that, um, that leach field. And we're using a Presby Enviroseptic, which is a newer, advanced alternative technology. Um, which claims to have you know better treatment, but it also has a, a um, smaller footprint. And it just kind of helps reduce the overall amount of the yard. Yeah, you try to blend, blend these things in. Four feet. The amount, yeah, probably yeah, three and a half, four feet, yeah. Jeez. To be grassed. What's that? The non is to be grassed. Yeah. Yeah. I'm interested to hear your thoughts on this one, Brian. I didn't get a chance to get out there. It did go out there with Rebecca. Um, Rebecca's thoughts, too. We're going to say it, it, it's mainly just flat lawn where it is. Um, as far as septic goes, I didn't see any other way they could possibly put the septic when you're out there on site. Um, the grade comes up a bit at the back end there, right, where it starts getting, where the yeah, trees fill in. Coming up right here. Um, and there's a border, you know, the back border basically just follows this way. It's, it's, it's more drainage, if that makes sense. So it's a smaller, and it, it kind of just borders that. Mm -hmm. um, the entire lawn is basically flat green grass right now. Um, I think our two thoughts out there was, was first that 
with the septic, we didn't see where else you'd put it. You know, and the cesspools for, I don't know if they're in failure now, but they're not ideal either. Um, it's, it, it's in failure now. Is it, yeah, yeah. So, so it kind of is. So they don't have a septic system anymore? They have a septic system, but based, what the failure means is it's no longer adequately treating it. So, you know, it's a potential yeah, hotel yeah. hazard. So that's, yeah. Yeah. that's kind of why there's the exemption there. And, you know, obviously the desire with the Board of Health and even from the wetland standpoint is to, yeah, to, yeah, to yeah. replace the system. Yeah. Where's the existing field now? It's just a cesspool right here. Oh, well, that's yeah. all. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. And it's close it's to the filling up and pump it out. So, so what, you know, essentially what happens is yeah. when this, this fails is they kind of yeah. just open up one side of it to kind of just yeah. bleed it out, which Oh. It keeps the effluent from coming into the house, but you're not getting any treatment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's less than ideal. Um, okay. the, um, Go ahead. Bathrooms in the proposed expansion. Uh, yes. Yeah. Right. Only better. Three. Two, three. Yeah. So all together, it'll be three bedrooms. Yeah. So because because we require the waivers, is we we can't actually increase that. So it's an existing three bedroom home. You know the way they're going to. Re reroute everything is they, they can't go to four unless they have a fully compliant system, which we, we just can't do here. You know. So you have a big master. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, you know, it, it's tough because you can see it, it's within the 100 foot, so it's tough for an addition. Um, it's, it's saving grace to a certain extent is when you go out there again, it's, it's just flat green grass. Um, and as we look, because you come in the driveways right here, right now, right? Yeah. You, you know, you see the shed, and then behind the shed, it's a little bit of grass, and that's where, you know, everything basically comes across. That it was, you know, it was it was hard. It was easy to see a building going between the existing house and the shed currently. Um, the shed makes a nice buffer for like you wouldn't want anything behind that. I mean, it's not an ideal location, but it's there right now. Mm -hmm. um, and it's an existing structure. Yeah, usually yeah. we look for yeah, permanent demarcation. It's basically, yeah, you, you've got a series of existing structures behind it. So, uh, you know, the other option they would have would be to put an addition off the back here. But again, yeah. we looked at that and, and we're actually going to get closer. And you're kind of opening that up to, you know, there is no demarcation between that. And now we're up against, this is the 50-foot setback. So... And this would actually keep it towards the, the more, yeah. more towards the front of the lot too. I mean, it's actually getting it. But it was, you know, it's hard to describe on that, but it, it kind of made sense where they were putting it. Um, you know, we're, we're trying to figure out with runoff from the roof. You know, does that just go to the yard? Do you want to curtail that somewhere? And it's, you know, it's hard to say. If, if it's just a dry well around it, it's probably better than trying to run it off somewhere else. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. <coughs> yeah. Uh, um, so yeah, this if this may help, right? That's the shed. Yeah. So that's the back shed, and they're they're proposing it's actually coming barn. off this the house. They used to have horses, so that was an old barn, and then there used to be a riding ring and everything over here. That's why it's all open and flat. Really? Yeah. It's a small property, little horse property. No works. It shows the other side of the property yeah, on the back side, but you can't really tell because there's more of a contrasting. Yeah, up against. Yeah. But it does show, I mean, this is where the septic abuts up against. The That's tree the tree line. line. Yeah. And um, then there's a driveway behind the tree line. And that, yeah. yeah, so this, there's actually another house right back here. Yeah. So this this driveway kind of comes across as the wetland here and, and heads up. Oh, so that's the driveway this thing here? Yeah, yeah. 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 Huh. That's actually the easement because their driveway actually comes onto this property. If that makes sense. So. So in terms of I mean, it's, it's a valid point as far as we are adding additional pervious area and we can overcome that if we if we recharge directly, which obviously the groundwater is, is higher here, you know, that's why the septic's coming up, but we could we could do uh, plastic chambers, you know, something low profile that we can kind of just extend there um, to, to directly recharge that runoff. As if they lose power. With the pump? Yeah. So First of all, usually when you lose your power, you, you lose your water also. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, but also, you design it with 48 hour storage. So, so you, should, so you know, you can keep using it, but you know, you, you might not run <laughs> four loads of laundry in the yard. Yeah, but, but still, it's, it's quite a bit of storage. I have two injections in my house, so. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Um, Rebecca, I'm curious, you had any additional thoughts? That was pretty much the same as what I was thinking. And I think, not that it changes it because it still is a resource area, but that resource area is narrow and it's you can clearly see that it's drainage from the other side of the road. You can tell where the culvert is. There's a bump in that um, common drive there. Um, no standing water when we went out there. Um, and then, or the previous time when I went out there as well to look at the area. So, and I think it is, the, it, I think it's the flattest lot that I've seen, so that's definitely a positive. Um, and I think the septic's obviously better than the cesspool because now you're getting treatment versus none, if not inadequate. Um, yeah, I mean, it's close as far as buffer zones are concerned, but it's outside of that 25 feet. There are structures within that 25 feet that have been there and pre-existing for some time now. Um, Kind of just reallocation of the existing yard. We're, you know what I mean? We're, yeah. we're, not, we're, not, yeah. we're not kind of progressing further mm -hmm. beyond what the existing limit of yeah. work is. You know, we're just you know, modifying the use of that space yeah. to the best we can yeah. and avoiding it the most we can. Yeah. Mm -hmm. what, what is the water table that you ran? You said there was a fair amount of ledge. What's the hydrology? Uh, we had modeling at 30 inches. Okay. So that's your estimated seasonal high. So in, in the peak of the spring, it's probably 30 inches. You know, we did testing. Um, we did it in January of 16, which was a dry year, but um, we didn't observe any groundwater. Oh, no, we had groundwater at 60 inches, so. At 60? Yeah. They put us on pumping. That's in January. They put us on pump in that addition, yeah. uh, They could, yep. Yeah. Yeah, otherwise, you, know, you could do a foundation drain. Um, you know, kind of run it this way. Because again, you're, you're just, you're intercepting Brown water, so yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah. clean water. Yeah. You know, it's, it's a flat. That's a flat side, but yeah, yeah. The water has to, yeah, push. Yeah, they, they're going to need some sort of foundation drain on it. You know, okay. And they'd have to daylight that you know, at the lowest point that it can. All right. I mean, can we say that anything that's collected and drained is drained on the opposite side of the resource area? Is that fair? Everything that's collected here is going to go to the opposite side. Mm -hmm. What do you mean? Well. And if anything, anything is collected or expelled from the basement, it would be expelled away from? We, the best, to the best we can, uh, like most recent wetlands, it's kind of in the lowest area of relief. Mm -hmm. So, you know, as you come towards the road, it is really flat, but the road's yeah. maybe a little less, but yeah. there's not enough room to, to get a pipe over there. All right, yeah. so French drain then. But if, yeah. if you're going to put some pump in, we've seen this on numerous projects yeah. where they are there. Right. Yeah. So if groundwater is at 60, there's a fair chance they're going to get water in that basement, no? Right. Yeah. So no, they're going to have to some sort of a foundation drain or some pump. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Other questions offhand? Martha Remington, Main Street. Um, I'm not familiar with the 104 Spectacle Hill. Is that the last house on the Bolton Hudson boundary or the one north of that last house that was the driveway is just before the Hudson Bolton boundary? Up when, until when was this original house built? Do you know, Brendan? Uh, it's been around for quite a while. It's the Sherman family. Mm -hmm. And I know they. The one on the boundary has not been around for a long time, and that had variances it needed to get to be built. Right. So, so up until about five years ago, this was the last house mm -hmm. before the. And then they sold the extra lot. Um, yeah. Apparently, and Actually, I think he yeah. was a builder too, but it's been for sale since he. Yeah. Built so it. Ken, who's who's basically, it it was in the family. Okay, so, so this is the one north of that. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Other questions. Um, 
does it does it kill you? Does it make sense to continue it to see if we can get some wording in around drainage? That's fine. Um, that I mean, like you say, it, it might be. A, 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 I can't remember the term about the sump pump. The other option, let's see, trench drains. Um, no, no, Brandon has answered my question. Right. Um, no, I think we can condition it. Okay. Right to say that if, if one is necessary, that any anything expelled from from the basement is to, in, in a certain direction. Yeah, and we'll also add the the uh, essentially a dry drum. But yeah, as long as that language is in there, then. Okay. Yeah. Can you repeat what you want in the condition, Jeff? Um, just that if if like, let's call it water mitigation is necessary in the new foundation, you know, aka sump pump, that anything expelled is expelled in the direction away from the resource area. That's given the size of the site, that's feasible. Yeah. And there's things we can do to minimize how much water is expelled over the ground. We could, we could perforate pipe and then we can have a, a subsurface um, termination point with rip wrap, you know, something's going to be able to bleed yeah, out, but, yeah. but at least it's going to knock those velocities yeah, down. Cool. I appreciate, I appreciate that. I appreciate that very much. So <clears throat> let Rebecca catch up. Okay. All right. So. That's it. Oh, no, Excuse question. me. One more question, Mr. Uh, Chairman. Please. Was that wetland from the Danforth Brook? Do not know offhand where the headwater is for that one. The thing is, if they hadn't sold that lot that was right on the boundary that already needed variances to be able to be built, they would have had plenty of room to probably do this expansion. But that was like six, eight years ago. That was at the house in the back was quite a few years ago. You're probably talking. 15 years ago. I don't think it was quite that long. That the because I know he yeah. needed some kind of a variance because of the driveway. It's a backland lot, the new one. Yeah. And, and he didn't live in that. I mean, the, it was for sale. I thought, geez, that guy fought for that lot and now he doesn't live there anymore. <clears throat> but I think that that's, um, there's a huge development in Hudson in back of that. Mm -hmm. And I just wondered where those uh, where that wetland came from, because there is an historic site that's just, I think, two lots north of this one. The old, the stones, old stone circle in Century Mill is named after that. And it's on private property, but that I always think of as being west of the Danforth Brook, where those beaver are, mm -hmm. down Hudson Road, you know, into there. So I was just curious. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure offhand. Yeah, I'll have to go by there and around. I don't know if it ultimately gets to Danforth or not, but just even in terms of this, is this was an 11 acre piece that within the family they did construct that house and they did fight hard for it. And you mean the new one? The new one. Yeah. And, and essentially, what really isn't by choice that um, that they're not there anymore and that they had to sell the place it was financial reasons, which is really what's prompting this addition because now they're they're kind of moving back in with. The father. Oh really? It's all a family thing there. Yeah. Oh, okay. So. But I think that wetland must come. I mean, if you get on Hudson Road, you have a real deep gully there, and it goes up, and there's the old stone circle, and and then back. That somehow, I mean, wetlands have to come from somewhere. Well, well, makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Brent. Okay. Got to make a motion that we continue the public hearing for one of. To interrupt. No, 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 please. Are you continuing based on the conditions? I thought because we were conditioning it, not continuing. Was that what you were thinking, Joe? You can condition it just off of. I mean, no, 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 so no whatever, please, no, please. I'm so we can write in that condition if that's the only condition. But if there's additional, gotcha. then we would need to. Gotcha. Just I don't know if there are any additional conditions. Could you read back that one? Yeah. <laughs> How it could possibly show? We need uh, to vote on it contingent upon 
So if water mitigation is necessary, i.e. sub pump, trench drain, water will be expelled away from resource areas. So we would be looking to make a, in theory, mm -hmm. uh, negative A negative five determination contingent upon the condition added that, and I would read that basically. Yep. Does that make sense? Yes, and then the negative five is just because of the septic repair replacement. So oh, it falls under a different, um, under the 1058 instead of just the general gotcha. um, well and protection. Well, it's part of the Wellness Protection Act, but yeah, that, um, is everyone comfortable to everybody understand that one? No. But could I see that? Yeah. Yeah. All right. I would like to make a motion that we uh, find a negative five determination contingent upon the additional condition that if water mitigation is necessary, i.e. a sump pump or French drain, water will be expelled away from the resource areas. Do I hear a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So put, this is our sign right? Yes. Was the ones you don't expect. Mm -hmm. um, do you have the lovely open mm -hmm. yeah. What's that? Another one. Another big one. Different one. Yeah. Thank you. Conservation Commission will now hold a public hearing under the provisions of Mass General Law, Chapter 131, Section 40, and under the Bolton Wetland Bylaw, Chapter 233, to consider and to consider the abbreviated notice of resource area delineation filed by Seth Donahoe uh, for the proposed Walker development located at 258 Hudson Road. Public meeting to be held this evening. Dusham again uh, on behalf of Walker Development and. As you said, that we filed an abbreviated notice of resource area delineation, which is essentially it's a Well and Protection Act filing in order to formally uh, approve the wetland delineation. So essentially there's no project associated with this at this time. Um, the first step here is to, we, we've gone out, we field delineated all the wetland resource areas, which I'll describe in a minute and we're looking for the commission to review and certify that boundary so that when we uh, look at the potential development of this, you know, we kind of have a fixed location of what those resource areas are. Um, so the property here, um, this is obviously Hudson Road, Century Mill kind of comes in down here. We're heading, heading towards Hudson this way. This is Danforth Lane that, that comes up. Um, there's the project site is two parcels, um, one being a 30-acre piece, which is, is right here. It's got a significant amount of frontage along Hudson Road. There's an existing home here with a couple of uh, structures. Uh, and then the second piece is a 20-acre piece that's kind of a flag. It only has 11 feet of frontage here, and it kind of heads back, and it goes all the way back. This is the existing Tennessee gas uh, line there. And it goes all the way back. It actually abuts uh, Dwayne Henry's piece, which we were before you a little over a year ago, uh, looking at a development over there. Um, the resource areas on site are predominantly uh, bordering vegetated wetlands, but there's also one isolated wetland, um, which is subject to the Bolton Wetland Protection Bylaw. So essentially, it's, it's this, it carries with it the same 
you know, it's got the adjacent upland resource areas and all that. Um, this is the existing house. Um, there's several uh, wetland areas designated by letter. This is what we're calling the A series wetland. Um, as, as we look at the site, I guess just to kind of look at the topography which, which drives a lot of these wetland areas, is we've got a high point out here in the back. Everything kind of slopes back down towards Hudson Road here. And then there's like a saddle point here. So from this point, everything comes forward. And then this funnels down. There's a low area, which is where this wetland is here. And that drains back towards and, and ties into that wetland. That um, I know if you were there for the Dwayne Henry, we kind of looked at There's a pretty good wetland system yeah, back there. Mm -hmm. um, the A series wetland and the D series are probably the most important as we look at you know, again, no project with this, but you know, as we look at the potential for development, you know, we're kind of looking at this area in here. Um, the A series is this boarding vegetated wetland that kind of comes up into the property here, and then there's a culvert that, that comes across Hudson Road. And eventually, that does tie into Dan Forth, which it, which comes along the backside here. Um, again, D series as well. This is this is the low area. The wetland actually comes up into the hillside, you get you got high ground water here that eventually comes down and it breaks out onto the ground surface. This is all um, forested wetland that comes down, a little bit of field here in the front, meadow, and again there's another culvert that ties into that wetland system there. Um, there's two small depressions here that are isolated wetlands. They carry with it uh, hydrology, hydric soils, and vegetation. And this wetland system here is kind of the upper reaches of a system that kind of comes onto both these property and again goes underneath 85. And this is a forested uh, watery vegetated wetland in the back that everything is kind of drained out, as we said. So we did have a chance um, to have a site walk and kind of go out and we walked the limits of, of all of these areas. And um, I guess at this point, whatever you guys have for questions, I'm happy to answer. So many. Uh, I did have a chance to go out. I did not see, what was it, the D or C series, the last one. This was D series, um, yeah. Um, you know, I, I wouldn't go by my expertise. <laughs> see, there were some soil samples done on site. Um, I'd be more interested to hear what you thought. I mean, I thought it was delineated <laughs> well, and then that area that you didn't see the full portion of, yeah, um, that's pretty defined by topography as well. Um, we literally walk through a lot of it too. Um, it's pretty well vegetated, um, so I was okay with that one as well, along with the other areas. Um, this back lot we just again just you can look at the topography and see right where it pools on top and you can see the clear vegetation and then the few soil samples that they showed clearly showed hydric soils um, and then the one up front same thing so I, I'm very comfortable with their delineation um, and they did show us upland as well as, along with the wetland Other questions? Any questions on this? Um, this is, I think, the first time I've had to do one of these. Um, are we looking to approve? Well, approve well or, or disapprove? But uh, yeah. Um, technically, yes. But it's a so it's a RAD order of resource delineation. Um, But it's basically just saying, this is something I have to remind myself about. Um, um, so if you find that the order of delineation is accurate, um, the boundaries described in the reference plan above and the abbreviated notice of resource area delineation are accurately drawn for the following resource areas. We're just looking at bordering vegetated wetland. 
Uh, and there's a couple isolated well on the subject. By a lot. So you do isolated, you do modified, inaccurate. Uh, modified would be. Uh, or they would be, so if they had an ANRAD that was already filed and it needs to be modified, then you file a modified version. If it's inaccurate, then you'd say it's inaccurate, obviously. And then it would need to be modified. Yes. Uh, it's just in car trails. Oh, that's something yeah. old. Didn't yeah. this have a forest plan on it? One of these, pe th this piece of the back, did, you can tell that was forested. Mm -hmm. yeah. In terms of the wetland area, though, it's, it's pretty natural. I mean, you look at some of these, there are, there are some open fields in here, but everywhere the wetlands are, they're mostly all open. Yeah. So so what is down to the most of it? Yeah. Most of this, all this. This, this is all. Does any of this have got the influence? Yeah. Action, yeah. Um, so, conservation? Uh, yeah. Uh, oh. This says Edinger, but I, I don't think. Because I'm seeing all this. I mean, there's no deep paper. The open space, I it's think, is here. Yeah. Okay. So you can yeah. still. This, this clearly we can make close as well. Actually, can we approve without closing? No. We would have to close yeah. first. Really Do you have a DEP the number? Bad trail yes. lady. I'm talking about So that's what this is here. That's a different project. That's a different project. Yeah. But this is the same here. I didn't mean to tell you. 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 I think the obvious question here is for all the projects that we look at, we've never been put in a position to have to approve the delineation prior to any, so, any development. Yeah. So right. for, for me, I know what my expertise is, looking at this plan, Brandon, and saying that you've delineated this correctly, is it usually the case for me, having not been out to the site and not being a weapon scientist myself? It's usually a field exercise, and it's not required. Uh, but it, but again, it kind of it's a protection for the developer, okay. you, you know, because it's a chance to get the commission out onto the site. So if you, know, you walk on the property and be like, "Hey, this is big pond here," yeah, and it doesn't show up on your plan. You know what I mean? We need yeah. we need to add this. You know, so the first time that they're coming out to the site is when it's development. So historically, we've done it for all all the subdivisions. We did for North Woods. We did one uh, for Hope Farm. Um, other ones, Safe but, but, but pretty pretty much all of the all of the large projects will usually come in and do an ANRA first. No. I'd say if it, if it was done, Jeff, yeah. as you know, as part of a larger subdivision plan, mm -hmm. it's generally our first step, right? E even if it was part of a larger plan, you know, there was a proposed development here. Mm -hmm. The first step for us is, well, did they delineate the wetlands correctly? Mm -hmm. Right. Is it's looking at that because everything is based off of right. the, the offsets from wetland well, delineation. Well, and even if it was. Just an NOI, we're still looking at the same thing. When you're going out to a site, you're saying, okay, how close is this to the wetland? Where is the resource area? So, this allows, I mean, you, you, you understand. Right? That that allows it, well, it, allows it, it allows them to put a plan in place without having to, you know, put a plan in place and then have us say, no, we don't believe that's where the wetlands are. You know, yeah, or, have, or have a third party. Uh, yeah, to, to oversee, mm -hmm. which is, a, you know, which is a good point. Um, my first, my first rodeo with this. So yeah. I'm, I'm stating that I'm, I'm, I'm not in a, I'm not in a position to quantify. So I'm not sure what I'm voting on. Is that fair? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, I can, I can, I can vote to say that I have faith in Brandon's delineation. That's your point. I mean, it's usually a field exercise. That's kind of what we do on the site walk. Is is typically it's it's our responsibility to show how we did this and translate that to the regulations. So really, you know, kind of what we looked at in the field is when we delineate these resource areas, we're looking at we're looking at hydrology, we're looking at hydric soils and vegetation. So you know, kind of as we walk along these boundaries where they are natural, you know, it was clear we're going from you know red oaks and white pines, which are up in species, to all of a sudden you get your red maples, you know. And then we, we did some soil corings and, you know, you've got hydric soils to upland soils, you know. So, you know, some projects, a lot of projects, we do ANRADs, you know, sometimes there, there could be some 
a more difficult wetland line. It could be a disturbed site. Sure. It, it could, you know, it's typically what they are. Um, floodplains can get a little tough, you Season. know, stuff like that. So um, you kind of want to go in and, and have that discussion and walk through that with the commission before there's a project, because you know, even especially if it's a controversial project, you know, somebody might look at something differently. You, you know, yeah, just know what the project is. So it just allows us to go in and look at, at how we delay the wetlands without there being a project. I totally understand. Two, two, two more questions. Uh, yeah. Are they flagged currently? The wetlands? These? Yes. Yes. So, so that, that's what we went out and looked at. Yep. Okay. Yep. And um, you'll be the engineer of record on the project if there is one? Yes. Yep. Yeah, and and as and just to kind of let you know, as you look at this site, is and that's kind of what I'm saying. That this isn't a disturbed site. Most of these boundaries are pretty, pretty clear. I mean, we we went from gray glade soils to you know bright, um, well oxygenated soils. So okay. and you get topography. There's a lot of there's a lot of things where this is straightforward, but still it's a good exercise to go through before doing a subdivision. So. Other questions? Yep. The possible. So All right. Too. So, Jeff Lawrence, do you think so? Would you do that? Okay. But looking at the options. Yeah. Um, comfort level. You know, it's, it's a question of, I think you're okay, possibly looking at third party peer review. So I yeah, I, I appreciate the opportunity. I don't feel like that's necessary. Um, more of, I haven't been on the site. Um, and what I'm being asked to vote on is really the faith of my peers and Brandon's professionalism. So um, given what was described in the process, I'm comfortable. Okay. Lori, do you feel the same? No, I feel the same. I, knowing the wetland system that was in the site next to it, that was a nightmare. That would, that would be something this, but yeah, it's really nothing much there to speak of. I have totally agree with it. You know, I haven't been on the site either. And so. yeah. <clears throat> full confidence in both of yours and, yeah. and doing projects that Brendan's done before. It's mm -hmm. always been. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess I was covering it. I'm no expert, but going out there was it seemed flag appropriate to me. It was nice being out there with Rebecca too and having her give a chance to take a look. And we did basically get all of those areas. Um, we basically did the full walkthrough on both yeah. <laughs> and around. Um, it seemed, in my best opinion, that it was it was fled properly. Mm -hmm. uh, Anything living out there? It's a <laughs> Anything living out there? Sure, there's lots of things. Sure, yeah. Yeah. Sure. A couple of people, I think, have found their way into the yeah. Yeah. yeah, well, it's fun too. Yeah, at different times. Out there. If you need an old TV, <laughs> there's an old TV yeah. out there. TV grader, oh, on course, yeah. Um, okay, so in that case, I would make a motion that we, oh wow, that we find the proposed and right for 258 Hudson Road to be accurate. Um, to, the, to, uh, to be accurate in the boundaries described on the reference plan uh, and in the abbreviated notice of resource area delineation are accurately drawn the following resource areas, bordering vegetated wetlands and isolated isolated vegetated wetlands. Um, that would cover it. Do I hear a second? Second. Alright. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So approved. So certified is accurate.
This is six three. Abbreviated notice of resource Abbreviated area notice delineation. Of resource area of delineation resource. Just so I know. I can't remember how. To. I can just see. I see. I don't know. Our area is a resource delineation. It's a request for determination. I'm just saying that it might be something. Yeah, we'll have something. Yes. So it's been we filed a preliminary subpoena. It's usually either an NOI or an RDA. This is the first and time I've had an NOI. During that process, because it's considered CLC a major residential yeah. subdivision. Yeah. Yeah. That's what you're talking I mean, it's bold, so I mean, it's, it's all but see, this could be a residential zone. So it's yeah. yeah. putting yeah. houses on it. Ah, uh, 18. Well, we'll come back. Um, this then we'll come back. You know where the house is? Okay. Okay. Yeah, so so because it's greater than six, this is how close it is to our additional land. This is based on our easy one. So the plan for accepted development rates to then shows the oldest space or land. So the goal would be kind of at the open space, uh, kind of in that back piece mm -hmm. and everything more kind of. That's the best property. Yeah. Once you started putting homes in there or offices or whatever you're going to put in there, is this a certified plan? Is this? Yes. Uh, no, so, and that's why it's just, this is kind of just a preliminary step. I mean, it's almost like final plan of subdivision. Where you kind of, it gives you a chance before you do the hard engineering to, to kind of to look at the site and look at it. Uh, so, you know, what's been presented to the planning board so the time is, is you know, a cul-de-sac with an open space development. And, you know, the drainage is really what could be close to some of these well areas. And obviously, you still need to come before you full engineered plans yeah. and file a notice of intent. And, you know, again, yep. we'll have an opportunity to go look at the site then, and particularly when you're, it's associated with a project, and say, hey, we're looking at putting a drainage basin here. Let's, Okay. Just kind of take a look at that, mm. and the, the work that work will be conditioned. So, any crossings, correct? Is that any crossings? No. Any what crossings? What do you mean? Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 we'll have to cross the left. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. going over oh. it. And that's going to date 18 something. I believe it's the 17 28. Yeah, yeah. 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 And what was the? Uh, the farmhouse in the front. Yeah, yeah. 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 somebody was saying it's one of Joseph those the places to sell these towns. I mean, yeah. James I and I wouldn't have guessed the driving by it. Brother of the one who owned my house. Yeah. Joseph yeah. always been the considered the Bonazoli homestead. Keys. Keys. That's what As it yeah. formerly called. I was wondering, yeah, we're with the original Bonazoli homestead. Yeah, yeah. Um, but the, the last ones to renovate it did not really do it justice. No, no. No. Well, See, <laughs> <laughs> so you, you need a project, I think. Sounds like bring it back to life. Yeah. Get yeah. your neighbor down the street there. Okay. Bob. Uh, that's all set, right? Do we have? Well, we have anything for the public hearing the request for a CSE? Uh, excuse me, Mr. Chairman. What's a COC? Sir? A certificate of compliance. Oh, okay. that one. Mm -hmm. ah. The Bolton Conservation Commission will now hold a public hearing under the provisions of Mass General Law, Chapter 131, Section 40, and under the Bolton Wetland Bylaw, Chapter 233, to consider a request for a certificate of compliance filed by Timothy Russell on behalf of the applicant for the completed work at 137 Nashaway Road. So, can you tell us? Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, so I have. Email from Carol from oh actually a few emails, site visit inspections logs. Basically someone had called who was looking to buy the property and the current homeowner's attorney had called and asked what the lien is on the property. And this is a perfect example of why you should close out the order of conditions. Um, and it's still open because there was an extension because the driveway work wasn't completed and some vegetation they were still monitoring it. That has been completed now. I've done a site visit myself on top of reading my predecessor's um, reviews and site inspections. Everything's stable. They have a nice yard up there. Um, all the plantings were done. Part of it was basically a wall of rhododendrons. Those are all there, very successful. Um, 
along with a few other items that are there. Um, and visibly, if you walk on the property, you can look right down the list and see it. Um, so that being said, their, the applicant's representative was requesting a certificate of compliance so they can move along with um, closing. If you believe it meets the orders, and I trust I you that it does. I trust Carol as uh, well. So. Yeah, I was say, uh, Carol took copious notes. Yeah. Um, in that case, I would uh, like to make a motion that we issue a certificate of compliance for 137 Nashua Road. Do I hear a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Other questions, anything you want to see added? Any word changes? I think it looked good. I had comment that the name of the property is actually Bower Springs. Uh, did I know what Bower Springs. Bower Springs, yeah. Multiple places. Just Yeah. Yes, Mr. Chairman, Martha Remington, founder of Friends of Persons Park. Um, I had heard, I, w I wasn't sure what, whether this was Bowers Spring or not, but there was a shed on that property when it was, when it became town property, and the town let it fall into disrepair or felt that it wasn't worth repairing and so it was torn down and I guess that's now where the Tom Denny camp is located and it could have saved the conservation trust a bit of money putting this new shed up. If they had kept the historic shed which was theirs before I moved to town but I know uh, my friend Rana Balco is familiar with that and has always felt that that shed should have been kept up. So I don't know where they're putting this shed in relation to where the old demolished shed was. No. I know there are, what, two ponds there and then a... Yep. 
I'm not sure if the whatever existing shed predates me as well. I'm not going to look over right. it long right now. Right. Um, I'm sure it'll be nice. This is a, like, <laughs> oh, is it predates oh, me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> this is I would say this is um, this is for a temporary shed. Um, like on cement blocks or something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. To be removed at the end of the season. It's for when they have their campers there. Um, Does it fold up or is it just taken away with a truck? I, I think it's just carried. Or does it, it, Breaks down, I believe. Yeah, it, it, oh, yeah, it's like it's, 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 it's a simple. collapsible shed. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, actually here, Mark, this is a relatively good picture of mm -hmm. the type of actually it is this shed right there. But I just, just wanted to down. point out that there was an historic shed on that property, and it's it wasn't a, kept up. It's one of those smaller, oh yeah, plastic ones. Um, almost looks like a porta potty. <laughs> And if you that. if you flip that over no. on the back, that's uh -huh. those are some of the things when they go down to the pond area they like to right. with them some of the safety yeah. equipment, um, some things they want to store. Down I had no idea pass. there was no fishing at Bower Springs, and why no is there fishing on any conservation uh, property? conservation property? Yeah. No hunting either. Oh, because no. that's conservation no, no hunting as either. opposed <laughs> to parks and rec. Yes. Correct. Oh, interesting. So conservation land. Well, the um, fish must be happy up there. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe yeah. just here. Especially the person that don't know. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. No problem. Sorry, I was curious. Curious about the other shed. Yeah. Well, as I say, those who were here before and who knew, they just thought it was something that should have been kept up. Thank you. Have a wonderful Labor Day weekend. You too. Yeah. Thanks for coming. So, if you want, I can fix. Well, I will fix the yeah. name in there, and then any other comments if the commission has any, and then I can have it at the next meeting. Then you can sign it. Yeah, because that gives them time. Yeah, I didn't have any other corrections. To put the Bower Springs, nice catch. Um, and they have time, so yeah, if we just want to redo it with that, okay. I'm comfortable signing it. Me too. And if we think of anything in the next two weeks. You see, now Rebecca. Right. And the last thing is um, another draft of the uh, rules and regulations for dogs on conservation land. And then a future potential bylaw. And I just want to remind anyone watching at home that once we solidify the draft with the Conservation Commission, I myself and with the Commission, if they would like to be there as well, um, we will be holding basically open forums where the community can come and express um, any questions or concerns so we can sort of iron out before we address it as a bylaw if that's deemed necessary. Um, also, I will be reaching out to the local and just other um, companies where they walk dogs as a source of income and a source of business on the conservation properties to, again, iron out any questions, concerns, um, as this is not a leash law, I want to clarify, but it is just to make sure that everyone's in compliance and respectful of the conservation properties and that we can still have more of an open use of the conservation properties versus um, a very restricted use. Okay. Okay. So I wasn't sure if any of the commission had comments or questions. I know Jeff had sent me some and I added them in and sent out an email again before I left this afternoon. Um, but if there were any other um, edits to me offhand. There's nothing I can think of. Um, I think in, in Jeff had the point too. It's, um, Horses, defining horses, and yep. picking up after horses. Um, Are they categorized as pets? <laughs> well, so that's why it's 
I animals, think so. not pets. Because I believe, do they categorize If you walk a cow out there, do you have to pick them up? I don't think cow? so. Mm -hmm. no, it's, it's livestock, but it's not <laughs> livestock. It's not really a horse is a pet, isn't it? Well, a domesticated animal. Right. So if uh, my only question was that between the terminology of pets and domesticated animals, mm -hmm. does that include horses or not? Because they are mentioned at number one. Um, I just, I think it's one clarification. Uh, to me, a horse is a domesticated animal. So I just wanted to clarify if we're expecting um, the question <coughs> writers to, to process it. To their horse. To process, yeah. Yeah. I I, it's a tough one. No, I, I think there's some arguments too in the horse community about how safe it is. To dismount yeah. in the public lands to, like, to try to clean up. So put a bag on it. And they put a bag, yeah. And the <laughs> like the herbivores are not carnivores. Yeah. 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 And it's a, I mean, I can't, I've been hiking my entire life. And yeah. Of course, mm -hmm. this. There it is. Mm -hmm. You walk around yeah. it. Um, but that, that said, it was. It was well, that's the difference is because they're not carnivores. That's the difference between the dog poop and the horse poop. Uh -huh. Well, it's still, I mean, not to get in the science of it, but yeah. it's still a very yeah. acidic byproduct. I'll say that, but one's vegetation that's been digested yeah. Yeah. where another, or, yeah. Yeah, I'm done. I'll just, yeah. Kind of disintegrates faster. Yeah. That's what I was getting at. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> The um, the fee, the thousand dollar fee, is that a normal? So that was based off of another town. Mm -hmm. um, that's something when I spoke to the town clerk. Those so it's the fifty dollars is the violation fee. The thousand dollars is the initial cost for the permit, mm -hmm. and that's for the full year. Um, and again, yes, it is based off of other towns and what they've done. Um, but if the commission thinks that's subject to change, I'm open for it. We just weren't sure what it would change to if it were changed. Um, but what, the where does the money go? That's my next question. Does it go back into conservation? Um, <laughs> that's actually a really good question. Really good question. Um, and that's something I can talk to the town clerk and the accountant about. Mm -hmm. But I mean. Well, if it's permit yeah. to walk dogs on the, and protect the conservation the property, then... It is, but there's a good on. argument, not a good argument, an argument, on the other hand, for it would go to the same place it's where dog tax licensing tax. goes, so yeah. it's tax um, reduction, not by much, but... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that is a good question. Mm -hmm. And, and obviously, obviously it would go a long way in conservation land. Yeah. You know, and materials yeah. are just yeah. inquiring or protecting. Well, it was only for commercial dog walkers, though, yeah. right? Correct. How many of those do we have using them? Well, well, we have at least three companies. Mm -hmm. I would say that offhand very easily yeah. and confidently. Yeah. At I, least. And I was curious, what, I, and then correct me if I'm wrong, what, yeah. what we found is that as other towns have said, oh, you can't use this, or, or they have opposed fines or fees so, right. they, so they, they yeah. can do a different town <laughs> right right and I, exactly. I was I was curious with the the thousand dollar fee do we find it have they actually paid towns are there some that are like yeah that's fine still we'll pay the fee and yep. walk here so you know it's conceivable that mm -hmm. we could because you know, Bowers is a beautiful place to walk dogs and yeah, we have those poop bags yeah, they'll bring their own yeah somebody's got yeah, yeah, free poop bags so yeah somebody's got paper those right. yeah the town's paying for them it is on a few blogs, I guess you can say, as a good place to hike with your dog. And I'll be honest, I commented one and just made a very generalized comment that said, please respect the conservation property and just listed out a few things very generically. Um, because I'm a dog person too, and I take my dog with me sometimes, but I'm also very aware of what's going on and aware of the property I'm on um, and I think that's a huge concern as well but I think because it's on these other sites just simply stating the name of the place and this is where it is not as a dog park but as a good place to hike with your dogs 
that's directing traffic there too. So the fact that it's out there on a couple websites at least, um, we have enough traffic where that's where commercial dog walkers are going to look for it. They know mm -hmm. it's a good place. Um, yeah, fine with that amount of other towns. Yeah. You know, if that's, the, that's where they've gone in other local towns relatively, it would seem like mm -hmm. it's a fair place to start. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Um, I know we talked about, uh, how, you know, if they, if they exceed your number of animals, well, having, having the number of animals leashed, you know, if they exceed yeah. so much. Um, and I think this was one of Jeff's comments as well, possibly, was do, do we have a maximum number? You know, at some point do we say, like, no person should be trying to control more than seven animals or more than ten animals? Yeah, or more than yeah that was a good point. Um, and I can clarify it more, and that's what it said to Jeff was maybe it needs to be clarified more. Um, but the way how it says one animal per adult hand, that's why it says in the beginning to clarify that. Yeah. And I understand that in one of the other bullet points it says if it's over the allowable number, that would be in reference to if you have multiple people with you, it's more than five people congregating at one time with multiple dogs. Um, okay. So maybe maybe I maybe I misunderstood. Um, well, what did you interpret it as? All right. So that when I when I read it, it when I in my mind yeah. it was um, allowable number of animals. That's one animal per hand. Yeah. So one adult can have two dogs off leash. Yes. Correct. And if it's more than two, let's say it's three. Yeah. Yeah. One adult has three dogs that all three dogs would need to be leashed. Correct. Um, are we saying that any one adult can have an unlimited number of dogs leashed? On a leash? Yeah. <coughs> so I, say. I mean, I, so that's not, the, that wasn't the idea behind it, but if that's what the commission wants to be put in, I can do that. No that problem. was my only question. Yeah. It, if, if, we're, if we're looking at commercial dog walkers as a, an event that is having an impact on others, other people's uses of the property, mm -hmm. if I'm a non-commercial dog walker and I have 12 dogs and they're all on leash, what's my impact? Right. It's a lot of poop. It's a lot of... It's the same. It's, it's the same. Well, yeah. Yeah, it's the same. So that was my only question there was, are if, if the number of animals exceeds the allowable number, um, said animal shall be leashed, bridled, or restrained on a tether or leash no greater than seven feet. Totally fine with that. Mm -hmm. um, are we limiting the total number of dogs per person leashed? Um, it says somewhere, I don't know if it's on that page or the other page, but it also talks about the breakdown of the commercial dog walker excuse me, to the company and then each additional walker because they can only have two each, if that makes sense. Is it two, is it Number of walkers per company limited to three per company, subs allowed. Five dogs per walker? Limited to three per company. Number of walkers per company, limited to three per company. So three. So that'll be six dogs. Yes. So if each person has two. Two, that would be six dogs. But it says above it, number of dogs allowed, maximum of five dogs allowed per walker on or off leash. So that falls under. Okay, so I remember what I did. I remember. Right, so, <laughs> the, so, the, so the, the dog walking company, if they have more than two, mm -hmm. oh, they're all on leash? And they can have up to five. Up to five. Okay. So per person. Per person. Correct. Right. Right. Up to so three, they have two up guys. To, up to three people. Yes. Up to, so it's 15 dogs. Correct. Mm -hmm. If they're if they're feed and permitted to that level. Right. Right. Which, Which would be that. <laughs> agreed. So if I started a dog walking company, I could only have five dogs on a leash of one. Um, if I With only had one person. One time. Correct. So if you're a non-dog walking entity. You only have two. Unless you, they're on leash, mm -hmm. you can have more than two. Yeah. All right, so how many can you have? Well, as long as you have dogs. If I, you know, I have three dogs, yeah. so if I have five dogs and I I'm, have 
dog licenses in the town of Bolton, I'm walking my five dogs. I should be able to walk five, six, right. seven as long as I'm licensed in Bolton. And they're on leashes. They're on leashes. Yeah. They're right. my dogs. Yeah. It's a, it's a you have three dogs. I have three dogs. Mm -hmm. So we just live in the acknowledge money a dog walker can make. It's my dog. <laughs> Well, I think I think in my mind it's what is the impact on the property and what, yeah. what's the impact on the users. If that's the intent of, of this, um, I, that was my question. That was my line of question. It has so many gray areas. It really, yeah, it does. But I, I don't have a you know number of walkers per company limit of three per company in, in, in town. That doesn't bother me. You know, it's more about. Have, it's not necessarily about the residential people that live in Bolton because no. they really don't It's the ones problem. that come from out of town that don't care right. yeah. about the property. Right. right. Um, and I don't want it, and I mean, if the commission wants it written otherwise, I can do it, not a problem. But I don't want it written in a way that restricts the residents in Bolton um, and has a negative impact that way. I mean, not everyone's going to be happy, but to the best of our ability, I strongly think it should not be restricting mm -hmm. of homeowners yeah. that pay taxes. They're to paying use taxes open properties. Yes. Right. And to use them responsibly. Right. Right. You have to do it, be careful. Right. And the only, I've talked to quite a few people on the trails, and the only people I've talked to who either have a, I mean, some people have a different perspective in terms of using conservation property, but that's one thing. Um, another is, really not understanding an impact to a property uh, when you're bringing 12 dogs, 10 dogs, 6 dogs, and just letting them run amok, um, sprinting through parking lots and sitting in the parking lot while they're getting reprimanded to come, that sort of thing. Um, so it's also even for the benefit of the dogs when you think about it because they're going to have a better social mm -hmm. Um, environment as well, on top of other individuals. Thousand bucks, so. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna have to go up in your fees when you're walking your dogs. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty fast. Actually, I would say actually permit them in some of these Bellevue towns. And that's if you think a different fee, like I said, is more relative or makes more sense in Bolton, mm -hmm. that's higher or lower, um, I can adjust that, no problem. But that was what had been used in other towns and been successful. Mm -hmm. um, so what happens if you catch somebody out there with seven dogs who's a walker and uh, sure. they don't have a permit? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, shot. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. Uh, that's not nice. No. Uh, no, but, sure. So the animal control officer. They're under arrest. Will yeah. come. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. By the animal control officer, and then in emergency situations, I did talk to the chief police, um, and it is the animal control officer's jurisdiction. But if there's an emergency situation, then we would contact the local police. Because that was the question as well, is, is it myself, is it an appointed commission member, is it the um, animal control officer, is it the um, law enforcement? Yeah. And so when I talked to the chief, and then after thinking about it and talking to the town clerk, animal control officer is definitely the best option. Um, and then of course, whomever's in the field, you can report it to the animal control officer. So.
which basically just explains a breakdown more of the fines and fees. Question, I think Jeff might have had it on uh, parking. Oh, yes. So that was a good thing to bring up as well. Um, and I, so Jeff had brought up that we have people park, commercial dog walkers park further away from the trail head. Um, and my response was I think it's a good point and it's a valid concern because, like I said, I've seen it a few times now. Um, but I've also seen where they're parking either directly in front of the trailhead or parking in the middle of the parking area and just letting the dogs out and saying that's the best way. So we're going to minimize the open door level and run free by having this in place. Um, but also, I still think you're going to have that problem if you're parking further away from the trailhead where and maybe that will enforce the fact that you need them to be unleashed and under control in a quicker manner. Um, but I'm not sure if that's really going to alleviate the problem or make it so now they have to run farther if they're still going to do that because some people still will with one or two dogs even. Um, but So that was another point that was brought up. So a parking pass. Could stick on their truck so that they <coughs> well, the permit has to be displayed on their vehicle and on their person, so they have to have two copies. Put a meter down there for the dog walkers, <laughs> <coughs> put their credit card in, get an hour, and that's it. Everything with licensing and vaccinations. Thoughts, additions, questions, comments? Mm -hmm. My only thought with the fee is the higher the fee, probably the less people you'll have, you'll probably have more affluent. Mm -hmm. um, the lower the fee, the more money you'll make. More yeah. people will come up to do it. Mm -hmm. But you have more traffic on the conservation. See something there a little bit. <laughs> so, a thousand? I don't know what dog workers make, so. Yeah. Yeah. It depends on what area you're in. I'll <laughs> say that, I'm pretty sure. My daughter lives in Colorado, mm -hmm. Durango, Colorado. She gets $175 a day to take care of a dog. Wow. She walks three, three times. She only does one dog at a time. That's what she gets. I suppose it's the same around here, too. Get rid of the orchards and put them in the house. Yeah, yeah. I think it's good. <laughs> Bolton Spring Kennels, yeah, it's coming. It's been so long, let me go for it. Um. I don't have any comments about this. You know, the $1,000 fee I thought was expensive, but I'm not a dog owner, so mm -hmm. I don't know whether it's expensive or not. Yeah. They're getting it in Hudson, or they're getting it in Stowe, Stowe yeah. or. Mm -hmm. Or if it's too expensive and they want to move so. on, <laughs> do that. Okay, you can leave yeah. it open for both residents actually who want to walk with their dogs. Which is what we were yeah. trying to do anyway. Correct. Right. Yeah, so I, 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 yeah, I, I, if you like, have, I a, have it be a revenue creating process as well, though, that's sort of where that yeah, I mean, apply, but, it to it. I mean, I'll be honest, my priority is the, the conservation and the land and, and the townspeople yeah. that, yeah, actually, use, actually use it. Yeah. Right. So maybe it's too low. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I think I'm comfortable with it there. Like I said, if that's where Stowe's at, well, we Stowe doesn't have, have, this is actually uh, from Weston, and then the DCR is also putting in a permitting process that will follow that as well. Um, Stowe, I can double check. When I read theirs, it just had a fine for violating the leash law did not have a permitting process for commercial dog walkers. Interesting. But they have a one per adult hand. So if yeah. it doesn't allow for more than that. So right. if you're more than that, then you get fined as well. Yeah. So it's a little bit different setup. Um, but I spoke to the reason why 
I used, or I think the permitting process is the best way to either A, discourage commercial dog walkers, or B, allow them to run their business and use the properties they want to use, but in a responsible manner, um, while also benefiting the town. Um, and sort of being forced in a way to be made aware and read through the regulations because when, once you go to be permitted, you're given the regulations whether you read them or not, so there's really no excuse. Um, but the animal control officer there is a retired environmental police officer, so he's been in the field quite a bit, and this is what he had proposed and put into um, the bylaw and under the permitting process. It seemed to be the best one. Um, and DCR, like I said, was working on theirs as well. Um, but all the other towns that have the dog bylaw or rules and regulations are like stoves where it's one dog per hand or they have to be leashed or one dog per person. Um, more focused around the leash law and then if it's not leashed, associated fines with that. Which I know we don't want to leash law in Bolton, so that wasn't what I was focusing yeah. on. Yeah, That's a whole different discussion. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, that permit fee, I think you said that, yeah, yeah the, the pros that would do it would actually hopefully yeah. we take everything else pretty seriously if they're yeah. willing to come up with that, mm -hmm. you know, they're running on the right on their business. Yeah. It's yeah. not a somebody's uh, yeah. on the eight stand. Yeah. You can also force them to wear a GoPro camera to keep. Sometimes <laughs> uh, I'm trying to put that in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I didn't have anything else to add. I don't so I this isn't this is a draft, like I said. No. So this is just if we're all okay with the draft, then I'll open it to discussion. And again, with the understanding of a working draft, right? Um, and then we'll do the plan right now for talking to the town clerk is to do the rules and regulations first on conservation land and then when we think we've ironed out what we need to iron out then um, establish it as a bylaw makes sense i mean i, I think too it's a, it a good point now if you're like think to do to get that public buy-in too it'd be interesting to hear what people yeah. have to say how many people want to comment what their comments are yeah. you know because it's, it's always the case that you, something you think is innocuous really upsets everybody and something you think will upset everybody nobody really questions mm -hmm. um so but, it, but as far as the draft stands right now i think it's a good launching off point for me okay um, um, my other question would be as well then as i start scheduling forums or discussion groups um or focus groups or other would the commission like to be a part of that, or would you just like be to handle it and fill you in? I can also talk to Teresa and have them be publicized if necessary so that you can review them and watch them if you'd like. I don't know that they need to be publicized. Okay. For the simple reason I think more people are apt to participate if they don't think it's going to be on TV. Okay. Or if it's being recorded for some reason, they'd be more apt to participate. Um, I, I mean, I, again, I can't speak for everybody. I think if if you let me know like what the plan is, what's going on, I'd be able to say, oh, I'd like to stop step you know, step in and be a part of that, or I'd okay. like to be at that, or maybe I wouldn't. Okay. Um, maybe sometimes I could, sometimes I couldn't. Yeah. Um, so I, I'd like to keep it open to us, possibly yeah, attending yeah. or participating, but I don't know that we need to be there. As far as okay. I can trust that you would get decent feedback and be able to present to us. Yeah, and my my question is, I mean, you're always welcome anything, obviously, to walk in. Um, but do you want me just like site visits to schedule around your availability, or schedule something and then? I, That's really my question. <laughs> I would say, and again, let everybody else go. I would say, don't try to schedule around my availability. Do it on your calendar. Okay. And said if, if there's ones I can make, it's great. If you have to, and if I can't, you know, we'll get the update as to what happened. But I agree. don't try to schedule yeah. around us mm -hmm. or yeah. needs. Yeah. Right. And right. feels differently, or what's the? Yeah, don't don't schedule around me. <laughs> 
Yeah. I still have a job. Forces me to go to work. I know, I know. It's, it's tough. It's tough. Especially with kids, they have to go back to school. They're all upset. I'm like, you know, I didn't oh, get us on vacation. Yeah. It's like, you know. Actually, it was quite quiet. Yeah. Nobody else. felt bad for me going to work this morning. <laughs> I don't really feel bad for you going to school tomorrow. I'd like to stay home today. It's actually quite quiet up here on us. Yeah. The pool. I didn't hear yeah. much of it. Well, it's been much. cold. It's been yeah. cold. Yeah. I didn't hear a lot of noise up there. I'm thinking. We're well, trying to keep it down. We know you're yeah, like kitchen laps. It's just and, terrible. Yeah. Um, right. Do we have anything else open this evening? Actually, Re uh, Rebecca talked about the. Yeah. Stone gifts. The gift of the uh, the bench. The bench. The bench. The bench. Yeah. Well, we have, seems like a nice gift to me, but where we put it. Uh, so where they were proposing it, I believe it's a white wooden bench over where, where the air is cleared. Well, what stone. they're proposing okay. is granite, but yeah. where they're proposing to put it. Um, oh. There's a white wooden bench, I believe. Um, and I mean, I'd, I'd be okay with putting it somewhere in that vicinity, but the question, that's not really what concerns me. What concerns me is how would you get it in there, down there? Um, you can, there's enough room for a truck to drive down there. Um, but I don't know if you need more equipment than pickup truck. Hmm. So it needs a plan on how to get it there. So that, yeah. And they, would have, they would do the install too? I would assume so. Would assume that's so. what it sounds like. That's how I read yeah. it. Yeah, there were. If my, honestly, my suggestion just because I don't know about, um, again, this is another structure going down near the water resource area, I would honestly rather see it up in the field or up in another area where it's easily accessed to install. I understand it's more scenic down by the water, but I'm just trying to think of, I'm, I'm not familiar. I mean, we delivered the wooden bench, which was fairly easy to move. And I'm assuming you get a strong pickup truck, you probably bring a granite bench down there. It's only a couple pieces. Um, I think a white Dodge would probably do quite well. <laughs> I don't know about <laughs> that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe a little bit bigger. <laughs> um, but so that that would really be my concern. But I think it's a great thing. I think it's a wonderful thought. And I think it's a great donation of resources as well. Um, so I think get it down there with a pickup truck. I'm OK with it. And I tend to feel the same thing, unless it was hurting something, because yeah. out of respect to them, I think it's a wonderful offer that they're doing. Um, I think it would be great there. I don't think there's any real precedent issues with it. There's, there is one other memorial in Ball of Springs. Um, that's Stone. Oh, that's one that is. Trail to Harvard. I think it has a Rachel Carson quote on it. Yeah, it's right there. Sort of has a woody type of back frame to it. It's a bench. Yeah. A big stone bench. So there, there is a precedent. Um, you know, on certain levels, I agree with what Rebecca's saying. You know, I mean, it's nice to have a spot to sit by the water, and people do. Um, it's not the easiest place to get. It is um, too well dolly. To get one? It's possible. You could. I mean, they can handle a lot of weight. It's true. You know, two guys on either side can drag two little dolly do anything. Yep. I think as long as we don't have to install it, I'd be happy with it. It, yeah. Yeah. it, it sounds like it's a... It's install. A, yeah, it's a hands-off hands type of thing. Know, huh? It's a hands-off type of thing. But I, I think at this point, too, based on at least the written conversation I looked at, it sounded like it was more of a con conceptual ask. And I think yeah. if it's something that we're in agreement with, then you know, I think that, that the company needs to be identified, right? The install process needs to be identified, right, right, and right. the actual bench needs yeah. to be identified. And what it, you know, it sounds like he wants to put a memorial phrase on it. Mm -hmm. you know, what is what does it say? 
Yeah, I no, think that's so a fair ask. Careful. Yeah, no, we have to be careful with that. Right, what does it say and what does it convey? Uh, yeah, especially public land, what right. I can say. Um, no, yeah. I think you need to just get a plan. I, I was going to say, it sounds like I can yeah. riot that said right. that it would be reach out to them and say that in yeah. theory we agree that this is a good thing and it's something that you know we're, we're happy that you want to do and would like to see be able to do but we just need some specifics on what you want to what exactly is there yeah and then possibly mention that to them like any you know any any words or any sayings on public property we have to be careful what it endorses or doesn't endorse um and it, not so much that we have concerns but we have questions about how it would be installed without not interrupting without um impacting, impacting thank you um both short and long term impacts in the in the immediate area. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we got we got say now. Got no. lots of good things going on. Yeah. But uh, it's one of those things down the road we might yeah. want to talk about setting up you now some sort of uh, some sort of policy for monuments and memorials in the future. Uh, it's possible that people in town will want to <coughs> do these and because they can be overdone. Yeah. You know, people, people have different well, ideas. What are different decent Lawrence memorials? Lawrence. Well, that's, we'll, we'll approve that one. Yeah, um, thank you. <laughs> but you know, you possibly have something in place because it's the only thing I worry about is mm -hmm. when somebody comes yeah. along saying, I want to put in this giant monolith to this right. and that, but you allowed this family to do it. Like, right. I agree. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's definitely we did. Very good point. Yeah. Um, no, I mean, that's. A good idea. Yeah, yeah. just a. Yeah. But I think moving forward with that is the best great. choice. Of stone that looks more natural yeah. in yeah. the setting. Boltonite. There you go. Yeah. Bolton. There you that's, go. <laughs> that's the way to do it. <laughs> All right. So you know when that sign went in on that big boulder that you guys fixed? How oh. did that get approved? Phillips block. Yeah, that plaque. How did that? We were around for that. It was just. No, he donated. He donated. Uh, all the land. So he just. Yeah, it was to memorialize the donation. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So, I mean, there was a process to do that, right? Yeah. yeah. So, it's something there. Yeah. Yeah, and right. just a codifier, we have some sort of standards that we go by. But it's, we have other parties going on. Mm -hmm. um, anything else to see? Mm -hmm. Worried fall planting tips? You want to give fall planting tips <laughs> out or anything? Moms, <laughs> any good moms this year? They're coming. Yeah. Yeah. Lots of apples. Oh, a lot of apples. apples. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. What's the good variety? Which one? Uh, they're all good. They're all good. Okay. I think my late season the cows, but that's beside the point. Yeah. 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 <laughs> all right. So that said, uh, I'd like to make a motion that we officially close the August 29th meeting of the Bolton Conservation Commission. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So close. Can I be a TV?